All right, iPad versus MacBook. Today, I'm going to have the audacity to answer that question for you. And it's a totally subjective question. So to make it a little less subjective, we are going to compare nine different categories for which an iPad or a MacBook could be used. And I'm gonna give you my decision. And by the end of the video, we will have a clear winner. We will be comparing the iPad and the MacBook for the following categories. One, students. Two, teachers. Three, artists. Four, YouTubers. Five, parents. Six, business professionals. Seven, travelers. Eight, fitness enthusiasts. Nine, senior citizens. Now, I have either direct or indirect experience with all of these categories, and I will give you my opinions on which product I think is better. Now, before we do this, we need to get a couple things out of the way because I can already hear people in the comments saying, the MacBook Pro is way more powerful, the MacBook Air is way cheaper. That is true. These are two totally different machines at very different price points. So we're gonna have to assume a comparable spend of money. The cheapest MacBook you can get is around $700 and the cheapest iPad you can get is half that. However, the nicest iPad you can get is upwards of $1,000 and the nicest MacBook you can get can be up to $4,000. So we're gonna assume that you have a MacBook Air with some decent specs, or maybe a used MacBook Pro, and an iPad Pro, which is what I use primarily. Now, I've used a MacBook Air and an iPad Pro. I have experience with both. We're assuming about a $1,000 spend. So if you have less than that, or if you have more than that, then this isn't gonna be exactly applicable. First up, we have student. Now, my experience as a student, I've gone to school. I went to study at a university and I got my degree. Now I'm in a career with continuing education where I continue to be a student, take notes, take classes, and take tests. Overall, I really love the MacBook and I really love the iPad. They're good for different things. When it comes to note taking, I prefer the iPad. When it comes to saving down files and actually communicating with professors, other students, and collaborating on projects, I much prefer the MacBook. Overall, if I had to choose one, I would choose the Mac. They both have excellent battery life. However, the MacBook just tends to do better for saving files using the Microsoft suite of documents. Don't get me wrong, you can do it with the iPad, but I think you're gonna run into a lot more pains with the iPad. School is structured. Laptops do better with structure. As a student, I'd prefer the MacBook. Round one goes to MacBook. Round two, teacher. Now, I do not have a lot of experience being a teacher. I have given presentations in classes. I have acted as if I was a teacher. I've helped other people understand concepts. And I can imagine if I was a teacher, which device would I prefer? Well, if it was just giving lectures and just presenting slides, I actually would prefer the versatility of an iPad. Now, this is coming under the assumption that as a teacher, you have a desktop that you can use. So we're, we're talking about buying an iPad or a MacBook to supplement what you're doing. As a student, maybe you have a computer at home, but bringing a MacBook to class would just be easier, in my opinion, to be able to get work done. As a teacher, you're not really getting a lot of work done, you're presenting a lot, you're in front of people. I think holding an iPad would be much easier to use for presentations, for lectures, etc., than carrying around a MacBook. So, for teaching, I would simply choose a iPad Pro. That levels a score at one apiece. Next up, we have an artist. And if you don't already know where I'm going here, then I don't know what to tell you. The Apple Pencil is an absolute game changer for artists. Now, I'm not an artist, but I create thumbnails. I dabble with Procreate on my iPad Pro, and I can very firmly say that I am confident that most artists are going to choose the iPad Pro, Apple Pencil, over a MacBook. The MacBook doesn't have a touchscreen. Artists like to quite literally draw with their hands and therefore the iPad Pro is gonna take the lead here, two to one with artists. Next up we have YouTuber. Now this one's a little bit complicated as well because I feel like I'm in the minority with my decision but I'm still sticking by my decision. If you are a YouTuber, you are going to have a nice camera set up, you're gonna have a nice laptop, you're gonna have a nice editing software and every single time you're gonna choose the MacBook. However, I'm gonna flip the script here. I use my iPad to edit all of my videos. Not just edit them using LumaFusion, but I also create all the thumbnails, and I really like being able to use my Apple Pencil. 
Well, there have been times where I thought to myself, you know what? It would be really nice to have a MacBook right now. And guess what I bought? The Apple Magic Trackpad. And this has allowed me to have a MacBook type use when I want to edit videos just using my finger on a trackpad. So the versatility that I've been given as a YouTuber to pinch the screen, use my Apple Pencil, or use a trackpad to edit videos, to create thumbnails, to write scripts, to research topics, has been my favorite. I can do it in bed, I can do it at my desk. It's the most versatile option, and therefore, I have leaned towards the iPad Pro as my main content creation device. We are going to give a three to one edge now to the iPad. At number five, we have a parent. Okay, as a parent, if you had to choose between a MacBook and an iPad, what are you even using it for? I would say staying organized with your kids after school activities. If you have young kids, using it to entertain them. Personally, I'm gonna go iPad here. Obviously, it's no secret that kids are obsessed with tablets. Now, this is part of the reason why I would also not choose an iPad because I feel like you'd be a lot more tempted to just give it to your kid and let them use it if you have it as a parent. But overall, I mean, it's just easy. The iPad is the best decision. We went on a road trip. My daughter was going crazy. Put on a movie on my iPad, threw it in the back seat, and that solved that problem. So already, the iPad has a very strong edge over the MacBook. The next few categories I think are going to surprise you. Next up, we have business professional. 10 out of 10, every single time, hands down, if you had to choose between a MacBook and an iPad as a business professional, you're gonna choose a MacBook. Spreadsheets are not ideal on the iPad. Saving files, not ideal on the iPad. I like to take notes with clients on my iPad, but if I had to choose, I would choose the MacBook every single time. Totally depends on what profession you're in, but if you're in corporate America and if you're not a super creative role, the MacBook is going to crush the iPad every single time. This one's not even close, get the MacBook. All right, next up we have Traveler. This one's a little funny too because I don't wanna lump this one in with YouTuber. This is merely for planning a vacation, bringing it on your vacation to communicate with people and using it as a travel guide. Personally, I'm gonna go with the iPad here simply because of the versatility. Now, you're probably not gonna to wanna to get a larger iPad, right? This is gonna be a smaller iPad, but if you want something to supplement your phone, if at times you want more than just your phone, then I think you're just gonna rather have an iPad. Now, they're both extremely thin, they're both easy to pack, but for example, on an airplane, I would rather watch a movie on my iPad than my MacBook. Fitness enthusiast. This one's interesting as well. I think of this as researching topics for workouts and then using your technology as a supplement for workout, using it as a video. You know, if you're gonna go out to the park or your living room or wherever and have to use a screen like an Apple Fitness Plus type experience, which one are you gonna wanna use? I'm gonna go with the iPad. The iPad, again, better battery life, more versatile. I think it's gonna be more enjoyable to watch videos on an iPad simply because of the touch screen. So senior citizen, I am not a senior citizen. However, I know a handful of senior citizens and they tend to get a lot more frustrated with their computers than their tablets. The tablet UI is so much easier for little kids, hence tablet kids, and older people. Senior citizens tend to enjoy the simplicity of an iPad. And let's be honest, most senior citizens aren't gonna try and do anything that even scratches the surface of what a MacBook could be capable of. Overall, we are going to give iPad the winner on this one. So, out of the nine categories, we have a whopping seven out of nine categories go into the iPad, and two out of nine go into the MacBook. Now, I'm obviously an iPad guy, I use it more and I really enjoy it. And trust me, I don't think that an iPad can replace a computer. This is as a supplement. If you have an iPad, you have to have a computer. It doesn't have to be a MacBook though. It can be a desktop at work. It can be just your ordinary laptop here. That if you're gonna have an iPad, you gotta have a computer too. But for these categories, if you just look at them, I personally would rather have an iPad because of the versatility. iPad wins. Thanks for watching.